Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's really good to have you here. Now, last week we decided to create abstract art using some rather unconventional elements and tools in the form of rubber cement. That's right, we created something really kind of cool using rubber cement as one of the foundational tools in the creation of this. And I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check that video out. Now today, not that it's all about making weird uh, weird art with weird stuff, but today we're going to use something, again, really kind of outside the norm of what most artists use, and that is going to be joint compound. Now I have almost a gallon bucket here. You don't need this much. You can get it in smaller amounts. And if you're not familiar with joint compound is, it's a solution that is used. It's basically a, a, a filler. When houses are being built and we're putting wall board up, have you ever seen you know, sheetrock, right? When you put the wall board up, there's a gap between them. So with some tape and some joint compound, that can be smoothed out and you would never ever even know that there is a seam there. And that's what joint compound does. And when we, uh, we open up and take a peek in, it's, uh, it looks kind of like this. It's a, a pliable paste, okay? It's, uh, it's almost like frosting in a lot of ways. Uh, don't eat it. It's not good like frosting. It looks like frosting. But what I want to be able to do is I want to take a board such as this one I have here. And again, you can work with whatever kind of craft board you have. There are some of the big box stores if you want to buy different sizes. This is just a piece of uh, 1 8 Luan plywood that I cut to size that I want to work with here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a layer of joint compound down in here to basically cover up the wood. Now, that's the start. What I'm going to do after that happens, well, let's talk about that when we get there. We'll keep it a bit of a surprise. So to begin with, I'm just using a, a fairly large palette knife. You can use a smaller palette knife if you want. And I'm going to come in here and just pick up a little bit of the joint compound. And I'm going to, in essence, frost this board by coming in here and uh, smearing the joint compound onto it. And again, I want to get up to the edges on this particular piece. And I'm not going to worry about precision. That's not really the objective here. The objective initially is purely all about coverage. So let's make sure we get this covering the wood the way we want to. And what I'm looking to do is to get approximately uh, an eighth to, uh, well, about an eighth of an inch. Maybe it doesn't really need to be much more than that on here. And again, it's going to take a few minutes of playing around here. And again, to do this someplace where, you know, you're not going to be doing it on your fine kitchen table kind of thing. I have a have a craft table or something that can take a little bit of, uh, a little getting this stuff onto it, because you will most likely make a little bit of a mess and have to clean things up a little bit later. All right, let me get over here. Getting close. Getting close on this layer. And there we go. Okay. So getting very close. And let me just kind of seal this edge as well. All right, and I'm going to smooth this out again. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I don't even mind if there's some uh, some texture in here because that actually might help with what we're trying to do. Now, the next step that's going to be coming up is I need to wait for this to dry, and it won't take very long. This stuff dries very quickly, but it's going to take you know 20 to 30 minutes to get to a point where this is dry enough. And once this is dry and I'm satisfied with it, what I'm going to then do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint on top of this. And we'll lay some colors down. And then I'll share with you when we get back what happens next. Okay, welcome back. Now, the piece has had an opportunity to dry. It's been about 20 minutes or so. And again, your drying time is going to really depend upon how much humidity is in the air. It's a relatively wet day where I am, so we're, uh, we're, we're taking a little bit of time to get there. But I still have a fairly firm surface. And what I'm looking for at this point is something that will allow me to paint on it. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some colored India ink. Now what I'd like to do is just take a color, in this case I'm going to take red, and I want to basically put a layer of color down on top of the joint compound that we put in here. So again, make sure if, you, uh, if your inks have been sitting around for a while, and sometimes that's the case, that you give it a good shake. And what I'm going to do here is just uh, use the, uh, the eyedropper here to get some, uh, get some onto my piece here. And then I'm going to use a paintbrush, and let's just come in here and let's uh, spread it around a little bit. Now again, the ink is going to soak in to the joint compound a little bit, and that is normal. I'm just get a little bit more to work with here. And what I'm trying to do is just paint this in. And one of the things I like about working with India ink is you have such amazing, vibrant colors that you can really spread around. And unlike paint, it really goes on incredibly thin, right? So it's incredibly bright, but it's also something that is almost, you know, the, the, the thinness of the layer as it's going in here is really, really thin. It's really just painting ink on top of the joint compound we've already put in. I'll get a little bit more up here. 
in the same kind of situation. And by the way, we don't have to go crazy here. What I'm trying to do is just kind of fill this in best I can with the color. I'm just going to fill the middle of the panel with the assumption that I'm not going to want to worry about anything too close to the edges here. But let's give this an opportunity to dry and I'll show you what happens next. All right, welcome back. Now, the India ink layer that we've put on here so far, this red color, has had an opportunity to dry as well, and it's dry to the touch. And that's going to be perfect because our next step now is to add more dry compound. That's right. So what I'm going to do, let me get my bucket back in here and get my palette knife here. And uh, again, I want to grab some of this, and I want to start just obscuring what I've just put down here. So this is going to be an opportunity to, in essence, cover this up. Again, I know. Wait, we just put it on there. Why the heck are we covering up? Aha! The great reveal will uh, will explain all. So we're going to come in here, and when, once again, I want to just obscure this and get another uh, layer of frosting, so to speak, on top of this piece here. And again, if you uh, if you don't wait long enough, you may end up getting some bleed throughs. So make sure you wait long enough for the ink to dry. One of the nice characteristics also about India ink is that once it dries, it is permanent. It, uh, it, it's hard to clean up once it's already dried because it will set as a permanent ink. So in this case, once it gets wet again after it's dried, it's not going to run. It's not going to be a big problem. But if we, uh, if we don't wait for it long enough, we may run into an issue. So again, I'm just coming in here and I'm going to frost this board the best I can. Let me come in from the side a little bit, get this stuff over here on the edge. Smear this down. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's not the objective. The objective is to make sure we cover things. If we leave some lumps, it's all good, and I'll share with you in a little bit why that is. All right, so there we are. So there is our second layer of joint, joint compound into place. And as you might start to notice here, we, yeah, we have to wait for this one to dry too. There's a lot of layers that go in here. There's a fair amount of waiting, but you know, it's an opportunity to go do something else. That, that jigsaw puzzle is not going not gonna to put itself together, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to give this a little bit more time, another 20 minutes or so, and when we come back, guess what? Time for some orange. See you then. All right, welcome back. Now, our second layer of joint compound has had a chance to uh, get firm. It's not totally super dry yet, if I'm being honest, but it's getting close. And uh, it's, it's going to give me what I needed, which is an opportunity to lay another color down in this. And this time we're going to be putting in some of this orange. So let's just do a similar thing to what we did last time. Let's... Perfect. I know, it looks like a kind of a bit of a mess right now, but trust me, it all comes out in the end. Uh, it's a very intriguing project to work with. All right, once again, we need to let this layer dry, so let's do that. When we come back, guess what? There might be more joint compound in our future. All right, welcome back. Now, one last thing to do here. Let's get some blue on top of this. We've gone with a very bright spectrum. I want to have something to anchor that a little bit. We're going to put some teal blue at the top here. Let me give this a shake once again. And uh, let's see how quickly we can get this into place. Well, this is going to look good. And that's what we're going to do. Now, one last thing I need to do here is I'm going to wait for this layer to dry and then one last obscuring layer to put onto it. See you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. Now, it's actually been a few days after we uh, finished our final coating. It just took a little longer to dry, and, you know, you get busy with other things. But we're ready to go now, and what I want to be able to do is to start to work on the surface with a sander. Now, it doesn't have to be any fancy sander. You can use a hand sander. You can use sandpaper if you want to do. It takes a little while. I'm going to use a rotary sander. We're going to use this guy right here which I happen to have in my shop. And because sanding this is gonna create a whole heck of a lot of dust, I've decided today I'm gonna to work outside to, uh, to make sure that I don't leave dust all over my shop or all over the house, you know how it is. No one really cares that much for that kind of thing. Uh, and because this is a fairly dusty experience, I'm, uh, I'm gonna employ the use of uh, one of these masks, which I, I have a whole bunch of them lying around the house. I have no idea why. That's right, we're gonna get this on here because I'm uh, breathing in, you know, plaster dust not necessarily considered the best thing to do. All right, let's go and uh, let's hit this thing. Now the goal of this project is not to sand the whole thing off because that would defeat the purpose of what we've worked on. 
but instead to be able to reveal different parts and different layers. For example, let me go in on this upper corner here for a second and let's see what happens if we start to sand down through the different layers. All right, now as you can see, We've been, been able to get rid of some of the different layers here. We can see the blue layer here, but you can start to see the striations and where the yellow and the red and uh, the other colors are coming through. And this is really the whole objective of this project is to create an opportunity for us to really drill down. Now I'm gonna go hit the rest of this and I'm gonna try to, you know, I'm gonna randomize this. I don't want it to be necessarily all being sanding down to one level, but that's really what we're trying to strive for right there. Now, as you can see, I wasn't kidding at all about the dust. This is definitely an outdoor sort of thing. Or don't do this in your studio. But I also want to share with you what we're arriving at. Again, it's subtle, but the different colors that we've laid down are starting to come through. Now, again, I can finish this up possibly with a hand sander or some sort if I just want to grab some sandpaper and go down. I'm pretty happy with what we have in here. What I'm going to do next is bring this back into the studio and we're going to clean it up a little bit and I'll show you how we're going to finish this piece. Welcome back. Now, I've had an opportunity to, uh, to wipe down this piece. Uh, a damp paper towel with some water on it uh, will pick up a lot of the, uh, the extra uh, sawdust, right? Basically, we're dealing with plaster dust here and we want to make sure we, uh, we clean it the best we can. Uh, I've also taken an opportunity to just paint the, uh, the edges and the back a basic black color just to make this a little bit more interesting and uh, I'm ready to finish it. Now what finishing really means here, well we'll do two things for us. One, as you may have noticed the colors are kind of muted. I mean they're, they're okay but they're, you know, they look like colors emerging from some joint compound which weirdly enough they are. But we want to make the colors pop a little bit and putting a protective coating on this will do two things. It will prevent this, which is, uh, you know, it's still relatively dusty um, from shedding dust, but also attracting dust. And it'll also make those colors pop really nicely and protect them from UV rays. And we're going to be using a, a great product. It is Mod Podge. Now there's lots and lots of different types of Mod Podge. One of these days I'm going to do a shootout of the different kinds, but just be aware there are different types of finishes, and this is a protective coating. It's used for collage artists predominantly and an opportunity to paint things. So just to protect your, your pieces, make sure your pieces of paper don't fall off. But we're going to use it as a protective coat and a sealer for what we're doing right here. Now, Mod Podge is a uh, water-based product, which means it will very easily clean up, but once it dries, uh, not so much. So in that case, I'm going to be using a, a, a just a temporary brush here. I just have a, a simple foam brush that I don't mind throwing away because uh, this stuff is harder to clean up than paint is on average. And I'm just going to grab a little bit here and I'm going to start by coming in here and let's just get a generous coat put on the surface of our piece here. And there we go. And of course because the plaster is still thirsty stuff it's going to be drinking up as much of the moisture as we can. So we're going to be re-dipping the brush on a fairly regular basis. Now I don't know if you can see it but as we start to lay this coat down Hopefully the colors will start to pop a little bit more than they currently are. That's the goal. We'll just bring them out a little bit, brighten them up a little bit. But again, the objective for putting this coat on is to make sure that, first of all, moisture doesn't affect this piece, because if you hang this on a wall on a humid day, it's going to start to get a little heavier as it starts to absorb moisture. And we want to keep the colors uh, where they are. We're going to keep the colors color fasted and in place. Now, it's possible if, that we could put this coat on here, let it dry, and then put a second coat on. I don't know if it's going to be necessary for this particular piece. I'll, I'll judge it based upon when we get there. But again, the objective of this is really just to show you how we can create an interesting abstract artwork using some really, really unusual ingredients, right? We have, we have our joint compound, we have our India ink, we have the results we have. Now, again, this may not be everybody's cup of tea, but once again, a big part of what I like to provide to you on this channel is an alternative view of how we can make some interesting things with unusual materials, but also interesting techniques that will help you in other aspects of your abstract art creation. And I think this fits the bill. And at some point I'll hang or put a hanger on the back of this and then we'll find a wall 
And uh, we have a piece that is kind of interesting, or it may not be, um, but uh, it, it, it definitely fits the bill of being abstract. That's what we're going for. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. And by the way, if you like the kinds of things you see here, feel free to join us on our gallery channel, which is at SpectivaStudios.com. Lots of great stuff in there. Holiday gift ideas, perhaps. But um, I want to be able to share these kind of ideas with you on an ongoing basis. We do that on this channel every single Friday. We drop a new video. And if you'd like to be part of what we're doing here, yeah, just hit that subscribe button down below. And we'll make sure you get informed whenever a new video drops by. That's all I have for you this week. This is Spider. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll talk to you next time.